Have you ever watched a contortionist or a Cirque du Soleil athlete move their body into seemingly impossible positions with grace and it looks effortless? What would you think if I told you that that same type of muscle control is one of the keys to unlocking your goaltending success? Stick around and I'll tell you a little story about that. I had a conversation with legendary goaltending coach Mitch Korn earlier this offseason about a really talented goalie that we both work with. And during the course of our conversation, Mitch said, I want him to be a contortionist. Sorry for the bad impression, but if you know Mitch, you, you can hear him saying that. And that really sparked a thought that, yeah, that really encompasses, you know, we talk about strength at length, we talk about mobility, we, I talk about strength in shortened positions as well. But really this contortion control, this idea of contortion control sums up exactly what we're trying to do when we're training a goalie's mobility on a global scale. So although this idea of contortion control might sound like fancy jargon or whatnot, it's really about the goalie being able to control their body in space, being able to control their body in positions where they have to work to find and maintain their balance. It's really about moving fluidly and efficiently in extreme positions, which is what you see every elite goaltender doing. Maybe not all the time. You know, if you've been around for a while, I'm a huge fan of the boring goalie where the puck just hit constantly hits them in the middle of the chest. I love it. But there are times when Every elite goalie needs that contortion control. So to help you just start to scratch the surface on what I'm talking about, I'm gonna share three exercises that you can give a try uh, and let me know what you think in the comments below. But we better get to the gym if I'm gonna, if we're gonna do some contortion work, we better get into the gym. So we're gonna start with the foundation of our contortion control, which is making sure or helping the deep stabilizers do exactly what their name suggests, stabilize the joint. So it isn't my big muscles that help me stabilize so much as the muscles that sit really close to the ball and socket of the hip joint, for example. We're gonna start with uh, just a single knee balance. So if you can't just balance on a single knee for at least 45 to 60 seconds, that's where you need to start. We can't start adding contortions to, to your movement patterns if you don't even have the basic of, of the pattern. It's the, it's the essential you need to learn to walk before you can run. So we're going to start with just that single knee balance. So very simply, I'm in a half kneeling position and I'm just picking up my front foot. I'm trying to keep my hand hands on my hips. I'm trying not to use my arms to stabilize. When you can do that for 45 to 60 seconds, when I test it with the goalies that I train, if they can do it for 60 seconds, we just stop the test altogether. That is unbelievable. Now we're gonna add some movement to that. And we can do the movement a couple different ways. If I wanna get a little more activation of my core, I'm gonna hug this medicine ball, which pulls me a little bit off balance, but I'm gonna try to add in some rotations. Now you're going to lose your balance as you go, so that's okay. You can just you know tap this toe down, find your balance again, and keep going. But also with this idea of contortion control, we're not trying to do it the right way. Um, it's, it sort of ties in some of this ecological approach or, uh, to teaching movement patterns in that part of it is let the athlete find the path that suits them. So if I am doing a rotation and I come over here and this leg's in the air and my chest is down, we might, someone might look at that and say, oh, that's bad technique and your spine's not neutral. And, but that's, that's contortion. Contortion isn't perfect. So I'm hugging this ball, I'm generating tension, and then I'm trying to do rotations, but finding the pattern that works for me. Again, it's not a certain number of reps I'm worried about. You're gonna go for about 45 to 60 seconds working different patterns. You can start with rotations, then you can go you know, to different types of patterns, forwards and back, just finding that stability through 
movement. And as you get more comfortable, in the start, you might be making pretty small, you know, small movements. But as you get more comfortable, you can be doing, you know, some more extreme patterns to work it around. And I'm not going to say, do this pattern, exactly this pattern, that pattern. I want you moving in different planes, different ways. Now we can add to that some little more dynamic stabilization in different positions. So I'm going to get out here and then try doing some chops. So again, I'm not trying to stay square and perfect. I'm getting in a somewhat awkward position, balance, and then doing a quick movement, stabilize. Quick movement, stabilize. Each time trying to find that balance. Load doesn't really matter. This is just a little something, an external perturbation. It doesn't have to be heavy. So this is, I think this is about a six pound, yeah, six pound med ball. And I'm not chopping, you know, as hard as I can right off the start. I'm just giving that little something that I have to dynamically stabilize against. And for the last one, I'm going to start without the medicine ball, but I'm going to do almost a little half kneeling lunge back up to stabilize. Half kneeling lunge back up to stabilize. Opening. I missed that one. Back up to stabilize. So again, it's a more of a dynamic stabilization pattern. And then we can get into other more radical positions, more contortion. So I can come out, boom, really reach and lunge, rotate way around, come across, and then always trying to find my balance point again as quickly as I can. And it's okay to lose your balance or to have to put a hand down while you're training this. You're not going to be perfect in all these positions. Your body has to find the way. So those are three different exercises, working on just finding different positions, trying to control through that whole range of motion. Then we're going to get into some of those awkward positions and add an impulse that we have to stabilize against. Finally, we're going to add a more explosive movement where we're going to decelerate, but then come back and try to find our stability. And really our stability might be, you know, in this position. So we might lunge out and then come back and try to find that position as our stability because our body doesn't know how to do these movements and these patterns unless we teach it. So we might be able to pull it off, uh, you know, fly by the seat of our pants. But if we practice some of these, then it becomes, now it becomes a motor pattern, just like a T-push coming out of your RVH, these other patterns you use as a goalie. This isn't going to build the foundation of your training, but these are some great accessory exercises. 45 to 60 seconds of practice for two to three sets as part of your structured training program. So your strength coach will be able to tell you where this would slot into a superset or an active recovery or something like that. In the game winning goalie formula, often we do this either between our supersets or as a third exercise in a triset. So there's your intro into contortion control and a little bit too of the ecological approach to motor pattern development. If you are passionate about elevating your game, looking for ways that we can work together to help you stop more pucks, don't hesitate, just click the link in the description for more info on how to do that. And remember, just like a contortionist or a Cirque du Soleil athlete, contortion control is all about practice, practicing with purpose, and learning how to control yourself, emotionally and physically. <laughs> <laughs> train hard, train smart. Now is the time to hit the like button. You know how to subscribe. So go ahead and do that. You guys, I will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Love you guys.